Planet Zoo has been rated E10 plus by the ESRB for crude humor, mild blood, and mild violence. It is generally suitable for people aged 10 years and up. From the turreted castle and Main Street to Monte Cristo Island and Kukwana Land, Bartholomew Zenon's Zenon Land is protected by the night sheriff. Day and night, he is burdened by a witch's curse to be aware of all that live and play within the massive fantasy theme park. Now an attack on the park by a monster hunter who knows far too much threatens everything, guests, staff, and fellow supernaturals taking refuge in the park. The night sheriff must scramble to uncover not only the source of the threat, but secrets of the park of which even he was not aware. If he doesn't, he may be doomed. The park may be doomed. Even the world may be doomed. And that's a lot of doom. Get your copy at Amazon.com today. Hey kids, welcome back to the Sequoia Park Zoo. Um, zoo's coming along nicely. The Arctic foxes are thriving. They've got lots of babies. Excuse me, please. Everybody else is thriving. I did have to replace a couple of the red deer because they were getting old, and I had to replace one of the European lynxes because he died of old age. Uh, otherwise, ah, look at this. Rachel the red fox is about to die of old age. Okay, so let's call a vet, and then we will look up and get a replacement red fox. There she goes. Generally, when you get the notice like that, they're just about to fall over dead, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, this is a male named Rachel. Interesting. Do we have any... Well, yeah, he looks good. His name is Tejid. Sure, why not? Okay, so... Anyway, back to what we were doing. Um, at the end of the last episode, I made mention of red pandas, but I decided not to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this neat space. You may have noticed I laid down some more pathway. I figured out that I wanted this space back here to be staff area. Um, and I created this interesting triangular space, and I decided that, no, we're going to do a striped skunk habitat, and we're going to put it right here. Now... I have a blueprint. This is a blueprint I made myself. And, uh, come on. Any day now. There we go. Um, do I want that? No. Hold on. How about... Or maybe... Yes. A small animal dome. I've used this in other zoos. Um... And we're going to use this. Now, this will cut down on the time it takes to build this because naturally, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. This is a majority of the, of the build right here. So we're going to lower that down into the ground. Everything's covered. Everything's good. Okay. And uh, let's put that down. Now, <clears throat> uh, yeah, here. Okay, we are going to be using the null barrier because, you know, we got we got the cage already, right? Okay, let's take this down to 5 meters. 5 meters. There we go. And then we'll just adjust it as we need to. Um, yeah, I uh, hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing well. Family's doing well. I got over the cold. Um, I seem to be developing another one, which is just the way it is for me. Uh, because of my health problems, I have a diminished immune system, which means I catch colds very easy, unfortunately. <coughs> That's why I'm coughing up a, a storm, by the way. I apologize for coughing in your ear. That is not my uh, intention, and I know it's you know not necessarily polite, but I really cannot help it. And I got to tell you, every time I cough, I bring up some goop, and I hate doing that because it hurts. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm even running a mild uh, fever. But 
I don't feel bad bad I just feel bad if that makes any sense I don't feel like I'm about to keel over or anything you know it's just I don't particularly feel good my voice is a little scratchy that kind of thing all right let's uh, let's put that right there okay and then we will change that to the steel mesh and bring it all the way up to the wall there we go now Good enough. Good enough. In the end, it doesn't matter. Okay, so do we have skunks? I don't even know if we have skunks. We do, in fact, have, have a pair of skunks. So let's send, send them to the zoo. All right, now, we got to notice, while we're waiting for the skunks to be delivered to the zoo, we got to notice that a, an ATM facility has broken down. All right, well. Okay. Now. Uh, habitat. And we will... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Can I get anything from these guys? No, okay. Always check, always check, because you never know when a free... 20 conservation credits um, can come in handy. So let's uh, let's see striped skunks. Striped skunks. We have these guys in uh, Florida, by the way. All right. Now I'm gonna pause this for just a minute so I can get some things down. I wasn't aware that they could use the bear, the burrow, but you know what? That's cool. We will put it over here, I think. You know what? We might as well just put it right here. Okay. And uh, let's give them some toys. They use the bamboo feeder. And, oh, they use the Skittle Feeder, too. We will put these things in different parts of the habitat. Like that. Now let's see what kind of toys we, we can use. Bubble machine and a tennis ball. And a sprinkler for heat modification. Where are we going to put the sprinkler? We'll put the sprinkler back here. There we go. Now, uh, striped skunk. Yeah, we're going to have plenty of room. One to two. Okay. They get along with raccoons. Whoa, hold on a second. How much room do I have in here? 440? Whoa. Okay, hold on just a second. Um...
Where'd I put the bamboo feeder? It's probably under a rock now, isn't it? Yeah, let's move this to over here. the one I wanted. This might be it. Of course now I'm burying the... I like that. I like that. Okay. Four hundred and forty. They can go all over the place. This is nice. I like this. Okay, so here's my question. Um, Let me double check this because I think I'm about to make a better, I think instead of just one species, we're going to have two. Yes. Okay. So we're going to add raccoons to our habitat. Let's see what the raccoons enjoy that the striped skunks don't. Okay, well, they like a box. Boxes are cool. And they like a ball. I'm going to give them a pumpkin ball because I think the pumpkin ball is just about the cutest thing on the planet. Bubbles, tennis ball. A water jet rock. Okay, do raccoons need water? Dang it, can't even spell raccoon right. They do, but it's not a lot. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Um, why is that snow? not lower that specific oh it's got the burrow under it uh okay come here little raccoon guy not enough climbing not enough water okay let me pause this for just a second And move this over here whatever this is this is the bumpkin ball whoops hello wrong button okay we're gonna move this over here we're gonna add some water and then we're gonna add
bit of a waterfall. It's Wasterfall. I hate using a, uh, a keyboard I'm not used to. Okay, now all I need is a little climbing for Monsieur Okay, let's let's go over here. And after I get the climbing stuff done, I will uh, I'll work on the the floor, the uh, the ground. Okay, so according to the raccoons, what this thing needs is more soil. Now, I don't know if that's also true of the skunks. Where are the skunks? Oh, here she is. much rock okay well you know I can deal with that that'll work okay I think this I, I think we're actually ready to go the slow feeder can't be right because it's in it's under the rocks okay so We'll put the slew feeder over here. All right. Now, what I need now are these. Okay, we're gonna put this one here. All right, let's see. Make this one about the raccoons. Everybody's, you know, all God Chillin's got raccoons. And we'll make that about the raccoon. And then we'll bring the second one over here. Like so. And this one is going to be about the striped skunk. Alright. Let's see. Let's put more of them. Let's put one, uh, another pair over here. Like so. Whoops, it's backwards. Okay, and that's the one for the striped skunk, and then we'll... We'll have the... Whew! Sorry about that. Um, we'll have the raccoon sign be over here. Okay, and this is going to be the raccoon. Raccoon's good. All right, what we need now
this has suddenly become a very popular part of the zoo. I mean, more popular than I thought it would be. This is this is where I'm gonna put the the animal talk. Or at least one. We're gonna have two on this enclosure. Okay, North America playlist. All right. Now let me, whoops. Educator, zoom out. All right. Okay. I'm going to put the other one over here on the opposite side. And it's going to be um, it's going to be the skunks, but otherwise it's going to be all the same. And I need to go to the work zones again. All right. Feels like that. We'll do the rest of the work zones in just a moment, and we're going to have to do the work zones. Okay. If you really want to make, the, the, that's this is the secret. I've I've told other people different things. People are like, "How do you make your zoos look so good?" Consistency in appearance. That's that's it. That's the secret. Be consistent when you are designing your zoos. And that's all you got to do. Just be consistent. All right, now comes the most important part of the habitat, the shade under which the animal talk takes place. <laughs> Okay. There we go. Come on, guys. I need to be able to see the feet of these. Jesus Christ, the crowds are so thick I can't see the feet. All right. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? I can't remember. Um, yeah, consistency. If you, you know, you, you want to make a zoo look really, really nice, have it be the same general appearance all over the zoo. Uh, same building design, same general. You don't have to be identical, but if you make one habitat out of wood, you should make the rest of the habitats out of wood too, that kind of thing. Um, 
Alright. Now, there's another thing I want to do. That's a little big. How about this? Yeah. I'm going to fill this empty space right here. Alright. Let's just adjust some of it. Alright, and I need one more tree here, and I'm going to use a copy of this one. Like that. Now let's adjust it just a touch, bring it back into the green area rather than on the path. Okay. There we go. I think we just had a death. Yes, we did. Okay, Linnea. An adult reindeer. And she's female, so... We will get... Brigida to replace the poor lost Linnea. All right, let's get back to our foxes and our skunks. Um, I want to check something. Gunk, raccoon, habitat. There we go. I think this looks fantastic. Oh my god, we already have baby raccoons? Yowzers, they got busy fast. Okay, many guests think the tickets are underpriced. All right, let's bump them to $30. You know, it's weird. I once had them tell me that the tickets were... You, you can't you can't charge more than $100 per ticket. And uh, I once had the indicator at 100, uh, 100 bucks per ticket, and they were still saying, no, no, charge us more, charge us more. Okay, um, let's check the animal talks. Okay. Uh, let's work them on the timetable. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and October. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So, this is our dual skunk raccoon habitat. I didn't originally plan on it. Originally, it was just going to be the skunks, and then I realized, hey, you know, I found out the skunks and the raccoons get along to the point that, oh, those babies are just adorable. They get along to the point that they actually get benefit from being in the same habitat. So, hey, yeah, sure. I'll put them in the same habitat. I don't mind. Do we have any in the burrow right now? She's all sleepy. She's very sleepy. Anyway, guys, um, yeah. If you liked what you saw here, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. Personally, I think this came out really, really fantastic, especially considering that I wasn't originally planning on it being a dual animal habitat, but that's all kind of cool. It really is. So anyway, um, when next we meet, I know I mentioned red pandas. Well, I have a space here that's eventually going to be for red pandas. Also, this area is going to become a llama habitat. And I'm thinking over here, I'm going to put the European fallow deer. And that'll just uh, uh, finish up this central area with antelopes and deer. Um, actually, it'd just be deer because it's, it's red deer, reindeer, moose, which are deer, not antelope. And then the, the European fallow deer. After that, um, I've got this space here that I don't really know what I'm going to do with. Um, I've, I've got up here to develop. We've got all over here to figure out what we're going to do with. It's going to be a fun time, but I know that next time definitely it's going to be red pandas and they're going to be in this area right here. So join me for that, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.